Hey there, welcome back. I'm Jana with Pro Together, and in this week's video, I'm going to show you how to pick up and knit the neck trim ribbing. Well, I chose to do ribbing. You might choose to do the rolled option. So check out page seven and see which might work best for you. So I have here my daughter's sweater. Um, I'm, I went ahead and picked up and showed you how to do this. I am not quite done with this sleeve, but we're getting there. So I will be my next week when we have the video on how I'm going to weave in all the ends and blocking. So next week's video will all be all about finishing up. If you're interested in the knit along that's going on in the Ravelry group, go check that out. The links are down below in the video description. And you'll have till the end of July, I decided, because I'm having a hard time getting things done on time. Maybe you are too. So end of July is when the knit along will end will end and we'll do the grand prize drawing. So be sure to enter your finished object photos in the thread on the Ravelry group. And also feel free to share your work in progress um, in the Facebook and the Ravelry group, both. Okay, so let's get started with the picking up for the neck trim. Okay, let's get oriented here for a second. Here's the front, this is the front of the collar. And then we want to begin picking up our stitches on the back left raglan. So, Pretend you're wearing the sweater. So that would mean this is the left side if you're wearing the sweater. And so the back left is here. And that's where we're going to begin uh, picking up our stitches. Now I'm not going to worry about all this uh, tail business for a while because we're just going to weave all that in next time. So we're just going to focus today on picking up the correct number of stitches and then knitting the rolled neck or the ribbing, whichever you prefer. So check out those two options on page seven of the pattern and you can decide what you'd prefer. So beginning at the back left and with the smaller size needles, you're gonna pick up eight stitches. Well, I'm doing eight. You're gonna do however many stitches you're determined from the chart on page seven. So that corresponds to letter C. So I'm gonna pick up eight stitches from here to here. So I'm gonna take a look at that and decide, I'm starting right in the middle of the raglan. So this raglan, you can see the two columns here that make up the raglan. I'm going to start right in the middle of that. And I'm going to pick up a stitch right here. Sorry about that. I'm going to pick up a stitch right here underneath these, this leg, or those two legs, right there in the center of that raglan. Okay? So you're going to have to see what works best for you. Uh, you might have areas where you need to fudge a little bit. But I'm going to go ahead and put in my needle right there. and I'm picking up using color A, as you will be also. And I'm not tying that on or anything, I'm just gonna begin knitting with it. So I'm gonna go into that hole there, pick up another stitch, go in underneath. Now let's talk about that for a little bit. So if you look carefully, let me zoom in just a hair, okay? If you look carefully, I wanna go in underneath this leg right here, okay? You can go underneath both if you want, but that might create a little bit bigger of a gap. So I'm going to go in under that outside leg right there. And if I pick up a few more than eight, that's okay. I can decrease those away later. Now, another option, if you like how it looks, is to pick up that kind of bumpy business right there on the top. That might actually work better and it'd be easier to see. So just experiment a little bit and see what works best for you. Now that, if you pick up the bumpy thing on top, you still are gonna see that horizontal line at the top of your stockinette column. So maybe you don't prefer that. Um, maybe that's okay with you. So you're gonna have to decide what you prefer for how the look. If you use the rolled neck, you may not even see that. That's gonna create too many when I pick up that, uh, the kind of bumpy thing on the top of that edge, that's gonna be too many stitches. So I'm gonna go back. See, it's just an experimental process to see what's gonna work best for what you're doing. Sorry, I keep going too far up with the camera. So there's three, four, and just remember, you know what, it's not a crisis. If you have them pretty evenly spaced and everything is secure, don't worry too much. You're the boss. So I'm just going underneath any horizontal strand, truthfully, and picking up what I think is the correct number for the spacing. So I have, I'm still gonna have too many, but that's okay. I'm gonna decrease it away later. 
if I choose to, um, and I will need to. So you do what works best for you. If you want to specifically follow the number of stitches given in the chart and that's concerning to you, then just evenly space them out and see if you can correspond where you would go in with your needle to pick up the correct number of stitches. Now here I've got this larger bit here and that's because of where I started with my tan colored yarn. I'm just going to hold on to that so it doesn't go anywhere. And I'm going to go ahead and pick pick that up because I want to try to mitigate that and close that up some. Okay. Now when you pick up from the outside like this, it's going to roll whatever pickup edge to the inside. So that's why we're doing this here. So there's four, six, eight, ten, eleven. So I picked up actually three extra in that span of that. Again, I'm okay with that. If you don't like that idea, then you can and probably should follow each column up and pick up a stitch right at the top of each column. So I'll show you what that would look like if we were going to do that. So I would go in at the top of this column right here, this raglan diagonal, and I would pick up a stitch right there at the top of that column. Okay, and then I would go follow along here and pick up another. And again, I would look at the columns and go straight up. And you may or may not come out with eight if you do that. Again, you're going to have more than eight when I look at this. So you do what works best for you. I think that's the most important thing. People get super stressed out and hung up on the exact number, which is important in some instances. However, we're gonna knit six rows of ribbing and that's gonna draw that in some. My daughter has chosen the, uh, she would prefer the, the ribbed neckline rather than the rolled. So on the first and second rounds, we can just, you know, decrease away the extras that I'm picking up here. And that's totally fine. So I'm just going to go all the way around and do this, following loosely the numbers on the chart on page 7. So again, we're going to switch gears here now, and because the uh, when I say switch gears, we're still picking them up, but I'm not able to follow the columns up and get that exact number when my work is on a diagonal. So again, you can decide if you want to pick up the you know, something prominent on the top of that ridge, or you're going to pick up the these um, outside legs. You just need to work with it a little bit and decide what works best, what you prefer. So I'm going to go ahead and go all the way around here, and then I'll show you. I'll count up my stitches and figure out how many I need to get rid of, and I'll evenly space my decreases all the way around within the first, probably what I do, what I'll do is just do a decrease round before I even start the ribbing. Making sure that I have a good multiple of four to do the ribbing with. The other thing to note here is whenever you're picking up stitches, you can certainly use a crochet hook if that's easier for you and go in wherever necessary, draw through your loop and then put it on your needle. That could be helpful, especially if you don't have very pointy needles. If you're using wooden needles, that might be a little bit more blunt. Um, these are my favorite needles from Chiagu. Um, So I'll have a link down below in the video description if you're curious to know what they are specifically and where you can get them. Um, I also have a, a page on my website where I have uh, favorites. So you can see what needles I prefer, and what little tools and gadgets and books and all that kind of thing that I prefer to use. So I will get all this picked up and then count and then see how many I need to decrease in order to have a multiple of four that's reasonably close to uh, what the designer recommends for the neckline. And again, I'm deciding to use the ribbed 2x2 two two neck trim um, because that's what my daughter prefers. If you are not using wool and you're using like a, a plant-based fiber, I'm just reiterating the note that the designer has on page 7. If you're using some kind of yarn that doesn't have, like cotton for example, that doesn't have a lot of elasticity, you may wish to choose the 
rolled neckline rather than the ribbed because it might just look really stretched out and weird if you did ribbed neckline with cotton, for example. But as always, you are the boss. Okay, I'm back around to where I started. I'm going to place a marker here. This is the uh, mountain marker from Ann Tudor, by the way. I'll put a link to her shop down below. She's got some cool stuff. Look at the little gnome. The only reason I'm not using the gnome is because the ring on this, I use it for socks quite a bit, and it's a little bit too small for these this size needle. So, and look, look at the little sheep. Isn't that the cutest thing? Anyway, so I'll put a link to her shop down below you might have caught a podcast interview that i had with her last december as part of the national parks countdown so that's where i got this marker was part of the uh, mountain theme national parks anyway marker and then i'm going to i'm just going to start knitting and counting and i'm going to count everything first and do my decrease all right as it turns out i only have about four stitches that i need to decrease away so I'm going to go ahead and begin knitting and I'm going to do a decrease at the beginning of this raglan. Okay, so I'm starting at the back left. I'm going to do a decrease that's going to lean to the right, right here, because it won't be very noticeable with the slanting of the raglan that I have going on here. I mean, it wouldn't be very noticeable anyway, but I just thought that might be a good thing to do. And I'm going to close up a bit of a gap that I have. So I'm going to knit these two together when I get there. So I'm just going to strategically place my four decreases as I go around. I'm just going to knit one round. Now I know this is not what the pattern calls for, but this is what I'm going to do because I'm the boss of my knitting. Okay, so the two that I think I want to decrease are going to correspond to the center of this raglan. And there's a bit of a gap here anyway, so I'm going to you know draw those closer and knit these two together like that. And then I'm just gonna go around and do the same thing, knitting a right-leaning or left-leaning decrease as I'm going around. So either a knit two together, which leans to the right, or a slip-slip knit, which leans to the left. Okay, I've knitted across the front. Here we are again, coming up on this raglan. So I'm going to take a look at it. This is the one that leans to the right also. So I'm going to do a decrease right there. All right. And now I'm on the raglan that leans to the left, which actually on my sweater is the right rear, the right back. And so I'm just going to do a slip slip knit and knit those two together. Say, I only should have one more decrease to do, and I should be down to the correct number of stitches. So as soon as I'm finished with this row, I'm just going to double count and then begin my ribbing. Okay, I'm on to knitting the ribbing now. And again, if you, you know, it, I got lucky and I had the correct number of, of decreases to just do them at the raglan, the point of the raglan. But it doesn't matter if you have an odd number or, a you know some different number, maybe you only need to decrease two or three or five. Just evenly space your decreases around the neckline. All right, I finished the ribbing and now I'm going to bind off in pattern. So let me show you what that looks like. It's just the regular bind off, but we're going to make sure to go in with the knits as if to knit. And then remember when we do a bind off, we're going to go knit the next one and then we're going to take the first one and draw it up over the next one, binding off that first stitch. Now the next column that we're coming to is a purl stitch, so we're gonna purl it, and then I like to take my yarn to the back just so I can hang on to it and keep my tension consistent, and then take that stitch up and over the top. And now I do bring my yarn back, and we're gonna purl the next one and do the same thing. I just take it to the back, I think, out of habit. You don't have to, but it will loosen up some. So, you know, do what works best for you and try to maintain a pretty loose tension for your bind off. So again, you're purling, lifting that up over the top, or sorry, knitting. Knit the next one, lift up over the top, bring it forward, because this is a purl. And then if you can hold this to the front, and keep your tension, that's totally fine. And you can also adjust it, just give it a little tug, purl the next, up over the top, and then take your yarn to the back. So you just wanna go around, all the way around, doing your bind off in pattern. 
All right, I've reached the end and I've bound off my last stitch. Now what I want to do here is cut some yarn. I'm going to leave a three or four inch tail, maybe a little bit more. Um, but I want to show you what I do rather than just pulling this loop through. I'm going to leave it as a loop for now and I'm going to show you why. Then what I'm going to do is take my darning needle and go into the spot probably here-ish where I want to where I want to uh, pull through this tail. But I'm not going to pull through the tail. I'm actually going to pull through this loop and I'll show you why. So thread the loop into the eye of your darning needle or tapestry needle. I always forget which is which. Anyway, put the loop in there rather than just the tail. And then it helps to make it a little longer. So you're going to put the loop in there, draw the loop through to the back. If you can manage that. Okay, draw the loop through to the back. Because then we're going to take the tail in and put it through the loop and cinch it down. And the reason we do that is that will eliminate, virtually eliminate any jog that you might have at the end and make a, a much more tidy, straight ending. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, we'll deal with these tails next time. As always, I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, consider a thumbs up and subscribing. So I'm going to finish the sleeve and I'm really hoping I have enough yarn. I'm playing yarn chicken a little bit, so watch my Instagram to see if I made it. But I'm thinking I'm going to have enough. It might be close. All right, I'll see you next time when we do the blocking and weaving in all those ends, and I'll show you how I handle all that. I'd love to see your photos. Use hashtag after the rain sweater on Instagram and hashtag after the rain sweater K-A-L on Instagram as well. And if you can uh, tag the designer as well as Pearl together, that'd be great. All right. See you next time. Thanks for watching.